Advent of Code 2024, day 3. The memory is corrupted. We want to multiply some numbers. Both of them just one three digit numbers. Many invalid characters that should be ignored. So if there are extra spaces, then we do nothing. Oh, it's a parser problem. But can it be nested? We add up what we see that is correct. Get the input. So input is few lines. So we will just read characters, I guess, until end of file. And we are looking for those. So mul open bracket number and so on. All right, let's try that. Wh whenever we see a character M, I will try to parse from now and something will happen. Uh, do I first read or do I as do it as I go? Let's first read. So I want a string. Well, true. Read a character uh, and just put it there. How do I check if there is something right? Do I do this? Oh, I don't have any break, right. Uh, well, maybe through this scan, maybe this works. Of course I could Google it, but I'm just guessing for now. Why? Why do we see numbers? Oh, because I did not save the input. It, it read it from the other, uh, from the other thing. Okay, uh, we have all the characters, I guess. Maybe let's do it like this. Open the out file. Yeah, it seems the same, just with an extra empty line at the end. Now that this is done, uh, for every character, and this time I will use indices to iterate. Let's have variable for the start, uh, for the size, because I will use it multiple times. For every character, if this character is M, I wonder if the hard version will be about nested mm, mules, because then we will need recursion for something like that, if something can be inside of a bigger expression. Uh, if this, then we're looking for and how to do it automatically? Well, let's say if, but we need to also figure out out of bounds. If this is U and this is L and this is open bracket. So for that, we need I plus three to be smaller than N. That's the last of those indices that I check. If this is all valid, then from here I want a number. I want a number consisting of digits uh, and one to three digits. I wonder if we should detect if we have four digits in a row and not allow it. Uh, so what now? Let's have here a function that will do something with this index. Auto get number at index get number at index i plus four. If something is invalid, this thing will return a negative one. Also, I want this to tell me how long the number is. So maybe the index i should be passed by reference. Like that, and this will increase the index i. So I will say here i plus equal four and this get number of i. Uh, then I want the next character 
uh, well, so if i plus 1 is smaller than n and s of i plus 1 is equal to a comma, because that's what I expect, then i plus equal to y is get number, then I'm looking for the closing bracket, so if i plus 1 is valid, I'm this is annoying all of that so let i what about this i will add to the string a few fake characters and with that i never need to worry about going out of bounds because I, if i see a character m then following that there are at least hashes so this gets erased mm, this gets erased as well anything else no i don't think so so now if s of i plus one is equal to a closing bracket answer plus equal x times y also let's look for the negative ones let's print this you can print with print or see out and i try to be consistent just like i read i try to print okay answer starts as zero uh, then get number is needed obviously void value not ignored yeah because i don't return anything here so i'm expecting a digit well is digit of s of i here i will create some number x is 10 times x plus s of i minus a zero this converts to a digit and this is how you can add another digit to a number also let's do x smaller than 1000 it shouldn't exceed that if it does i don't want to allow overflows uh, we have that and here i plus plus and if something goes wrong we need to return do do we allow zeros I wonder if we should look for leading zeros, if I should treat zero, one, two as something invalid. Do I have zeros here? Zero. Yes, we do. Do I have zero just after an opening bracket? No. And just after a comma? No. Good. So I don't need to worry about it. Nothing starts with a zero, apparently. So if x1 small or equal x and x small or equal this, Return x, else return negative one. Uh, let's say here, if x is not negative one and y is not negative one, do that. Mm, what did I do wrong? Colon versus semicolon. All right, they are providing answer for this thing, so let's save it to another file. 0, 3 on sample. Ignore that deadly signal, it's an issue with my compiler. Uh, why do I see hashes? Because I still print S? Do I print S? Oh, <laughs> I want to print the answer. I printed just the input string with extra hashes. 0. That's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, should I maybe increase I more? No. So for every character, if this is a U, if what follows is, if this is M and what follows is U L opening bracket, then we move here, then we convert. Let's at this point print index I and let's print end. Do I see anything? Yes, we do. We get quite a few numbers then if the next thing should i just say this because the index i is already moved and this is that enough no then let's print something extra here okay we sometimes get there I want to print y, x and y. Oh, just at one, not not two, obviously. 
because if you have a dot, uh, sorry, you have a command and just after that you will have your target. Okay, it works now. Let's run for the real input. We have the answer, submit. Correct, continue to part two, part two. Oh, we have do and don't. Do enables uh, the future more instructions, don't disables it. Only the most recent do or don't instruction applies. Oh, so it's not recursion. Okay, that's convenient. Um, oh, and it's not in brackets. Do and don't. Okay, that's easy. That's easy thing to add. I expected something way harder, to be honest something where inside of brackets you can have other brackets stuff like that bool do i'll do is a keyword um, enable i will say is by default true and here if substring of substring uh, of s starting at i and do i provide here length or the final uh, the final position i don't remember i think it's final position so if we have four consecutive characters equal to do uh, then we enable true and independently if the substring of some number of characters e is equal to don't apostrophe is a special character so you need to backslash and it enable is false one two three four five six seven not very professional but this and do i i will just do this to avoid out of bounds a few extra hashes for safety uh, enable not used yeah, yeah I, I want to say here well if enable otherwise don't even check if you have an m now we have the sample run for sample ignore that 161 again is that correct no 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 48 so apparently this is wrong what if i do seven and four again i sh i might just check in the internet 48 it's supposed to be 48 okay good now the get your puzzle so the input is the same And it's correct. Good. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe in the future days we will have something that is more about parsing. On LeetCode you will find few parsing problems, I guess and hope. Here there was no recursion, we just looked for substrings and we needed to be able to parse digits into numbers. I wonder how simple you can get this solution in Python. So can you do it in like 10 lines and 20% of length of my code? Tell me in comments. I will also look up online what other people did. Thank you for watching today. Uh, I'm not going to comment on time complexity because it's like linear times length of several. So nothing very interesting. Though you could look for substrings slightly faster than what we're doing here. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't make sense to analyze it for something so short. You shouldn't do hashes and other string algorithms here. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.